Uh, tomorrow, Eric Severide, who came to London after reporting the collapse of French resistance, leaves for Lisbon on the first leg of his journey home. Perhaps you'd like to know what an American reporter thinks about on his last night in London. Three years ago tonight, I sailed from New York with a vague feeling that European history was about to burst of its own centrifugal force and that I wanted a close-up view. For knowledge of what's happening, you have to be here. For understanding, no. I still believe the American public has understood better these last few years where Europe was going than any public in Europe. Why is it that college students far off in the Middle West clearly saw the result of Abyssinia and Spain and Munich and at once thought to the bottom of the fascist movements when statesmen of England and France and the lesser countries did not? Now I think Americans are struggling for clarity on their own position since America is now involved. It's much easier to see where others are going than yourself. And I want to try to find out what those college students and the men in Washington and those hoping to get to Washington are saying about themselves. If this winter's war is one of slow attrition, I believe the eyes of the whole world will follow Washington closer than London or Berlin. For the shoe's now on the other foot. I can go into any pub or shelter in London tonight and hear busmen and shopkeepers discuss American errors in preparedness or diplomacy exactly as we used to talk about theirs. Two things I've seen in Europe will last in my memory forever. One was the death of Paris. Paris died like a beautiful woman in coma, without struggle, without knowing or even asking why. That haze of smoke creeping like a shroud over the body while her lifeblood drained quietly and rapidly away through all her arteries. The other thing is this Battle of London. London is called the heart of an empire and a civilization. To me, it's more like the massive old head and face, grayed and blackened with age. Every morning, you feel the urge to climb to some high place and try to see where the face has been gashed and chipped in the night. One left Paris with a feeling almost of relief. London, one leaves with regret. Of all the great cities of Europe, London alone behaves with pride and battered but stubborn dignity. Paris did not, nor Prague, nor Brussels, nor Oslo. London fights down her fears every night, takes her blows, and gets up again every morning. You feel yourself an embattled member of this embattled corps. The attraction of courage is irresistible. Parting from London, you see clearly what she is and means. London may not be England, but she is Britain, and she is the incubator of America and the West. Should she collapse, the explosion in history would never stop its echoing. Besieged London is a city state in the old Greek sense. Someone here wrote the other day, when this is all over, in the years to come, men will speak of this war and say, I was a soldier, I was a sailor, or I was a pilot. Others will say with equal pride, I was a citizen of London. I return you now to CBS in New York.